All right, so first things first, gentlemen, how are you? We're good. We're, we're you know, coming, well, we're, I would say, still in the midst of, of a pretty hectic uh, press tour, but it's been, it's been going, it's exciting, it's been going really well, and yeah, so. Okay, that's good. Um, where I want to start with is uh, kind of the, the idea of, I, th I think before this album, you as a band kind of asked yourself the question, why are we doing this? Mm -hmm. Uh, so I want to go back to the beginning when you first got into music and started playing music. Do you remember what kind of the, the motivation or, or what you got out of it was back then? Um, well, it's, uh, it, we have to go back a long way because <laughs> Martin and I actually have known each other for a really long time. Right. I think the first memory I have of him, we were about 10 years old and then we really became friends when we were about 13 or 14. and. Um, Right around that time, our, our relationship when we started to become friends has always been largely based on music and our shared love of music, making music together, obviously, pretty soon after we met and became friends, we started our first band together. Um, I think for me, I can answer personally, like, I had this just young teenage, pre-teenage obsession with music, mostly like classic rock stuff okay, on the sure. radio, but it like spoke to me. Maybe something about going through that hormonal phase of my life and the emotional aspects of the music and just like everything. I was like completely obsessed. And when I would meet other people who also shared that, you just kind of like had to, I don't know, it just formed like an incredible bond. So making music was the logical, obvious next right. step. It was all I wanted to do. You know, I wanted to be like these people that were inspiring me so much. Yeah, I mean, I, I also, I <laughs> there's, yeah, there's definitely all of that. And I, I also remember, like, even being even younger, even before I met Alex, I was in the fourth grade, and um, some friends of mine and, and myself, like, I, had, I, I was, I, I played the bass, I played double bass, like, in the, you know, the <laughs> school orchestra or whatever, and then I started playing electric bass, and we, like, put together this little, like, tiny, like, this little, uh, cover band for the high school or for the, the elementary school uh, talent show and we we were the only people that like played our own instruments you know there was a lot of kids doing like lip syncing and like dance routines mm -hmm. and stuff and I just remember <laughs> this feeling of like like you know setting our stuff up and being like uh, feeling like we were like really important you know and like you're just <laughs> feeling like that we like I have something I need to do like this is like right. that like I'm like uh, yeah like, doing something like it's kind of an intangible feeling that I still get of just feeling like you're making something and, and, and I remember like yeah I think th like he was saying throughout high school we were in all these different bands and it was like it's just fun it's just always so much fun mm. to play music so I guess that's why we did it because it was <laughs> like you know it was our hobby we weren't really like I, I personally was not really like into sports I didn't play uh, on any like teams right. uh, or anything like that so like our thing was we did music and it was kind of like our it's how we formed our friendships and our whole kind of group of friends was kind of based around like mm. this love of music very quickly do you remember what you played in the uh, talent show yeah yeah we played Sweet Home Alabama okay. which is a weird pick <laughs> and we played Blue Suede Shoes <laughs> by Elvis Presley, the classics, and we played uh, rock and roll all night and party every day <laughs> by Kiss. <laughs> yeah, no, none of us wanted to sing. So, but is there any video of this? There it's is. Great to it, cut. To oh my video. god, yeah, it'd be amazing. <laughs> if it's on YouTube, I'll find it. Yeah, it's, it's not. It's definitely not. It's like in my parents. <laughs> yeah, in a box somewhere. I've got to find it though. But yeah, what? So it was like, you know, bass player, guitar player. My friend Grant, our friend Grant, who was on the drums, who now tours with us as our lighting guy, mm -hmm. we, you know, old, old friend. And then our friend Ethan, Ethan Frenchman uh, sang because he was the only one that actually like had the confidence to, you know, sing, you know, in front of a crowd or whatever. So right. it was pretty funny. It kind of this, this innocent time and kind of like you say, you're just working towards something, you're just doing something and you're not really thinking about it. Along the line as you make albums and then kind of, uh, yeah, life happens, you grow older. Did you lose some of that? Uh, and was that kind of the, the, why you asked that question right before this uh, album, the main thing? I think it was never a question we really felt like we needed to ask until mm. right now. And it just okay. because, and I'm really glad that we did, you know? Um, you mean like until we 
until kind of started thinking about until this before we made this record. Okay. Yeah, not right in the second, but until <laughs> sure. until just before we made this record. And I'm glad that we asked the question because I think it made the record a lot better. But I think we, you know, we started the band even though we'd known each other and been playing different kinds of music with each other for many years. When we started the band, we were sort of approaching a new musical style for us, and there was a lot of exciting external factors because we were fortunate enough to get some attention pretty early on in our career. And you have that drive and the buzz, and it's almost like you don't even need to ask the question because it's redundant. It's obvious what you're doing there. It's connecting with yourself, and it's connecting with people, and you have that momentum. And it's a wonderful thing to become a professional musician, but simultaneously, like, you can tend, you can begin to rely on what it is you do. What is the thing that you do? And I think there are a lot of reasons why we started looking harder at the things that we do organically or naturally and just questioning uh, whether to keep doing it that way or change it up or some, some mm. combination of the two. You know, a lot of it had to do with like, what does it mean uh, to make an album right now in 2020 when the world feels sure. like a much different place than it sure. did 10 years ago when we were putting out our, our first couple of albums and and so and also what does it mean to be a band that's made five albums and risk repeating yourself and who does that serve you know like we didn't want to get complacent we didn't want to do something that we just felt like oh I guess it's time to make an album and we'll do that and fans will hear it you know we, we needed to find that early thing again mm. and you have to work harder, I guess, the further along that you get, you know? The last thing you want is, like, for it to feel like it's starting to get routine. And when you get into the cycle of making records, even though it's a long cycle and it's like a several-year process, you start to be like, okay, time to make another record, and then we're going to, you know, tour. And, tour and <laughs> it's like, it's this thing, and it's like rinse yeah. and repeat. Um, and, you know, it's like basically just trying to remember w why it's, why you're grateful to even be able to do it in the first place you know it's mm -hmm. like it's it's still an incredible thing that we get to do this so it's like to just remember to be in touch with that throughout the process sure there, there, there is an aspect to this but it might not be applicable to to uh, you guys but what i hear every once in a while uh, from bands is that because you're touring so heavily and then kind of the band is the main focus that it's also uh, and you've made five albums which is at least 10 years so so that they kind of uh, your own identity gets pushed to the side a little bit and you kind of have to figure out. So was that an aspect, a personal element to it as well? Definitely. And, and you know, like when we first started out, we would, we used to do these, like we would tour for six weeks or whatever. We do these like long, crazy tours. And even then, even like at a certain point after a few years, it's like, you can't, you, you, you want to have a real life outside of this band. So yeah, I mean, we've started, we started, thinking about that a while ago, like okay. just making the making sure the tours are not too long and they're spaced out. And that's something that we're, I think, pretty good at. I mean, usually the tour, we try to have like a two week limit for the length of the tours. And usually they end up stretching a little bit longer with like travel days and things get tacked on here and there. But like, it's just like good to try and at least keep that as a philosophy because now, especially like last year alone, three of the guys in the band got married Mm. I'm married. I've got kid. I'm, you know, I've got kids. So it's just, it's just like a. You, know, you need to make space for yourself. Otherwise, it's going to start to suck anyway. It's the gonna, risk of burnout is real. You know, right. and if people begin resenting what it is, then it's not going to exist much longer. And so, yeah, I think we've learned over the years that you know you've got to accept uh, people's sort of needs uh, outside of the band in order to make make the band uh, as a greater than a sum of its parts kind of thing right. continue to roll on you know and that idea of kind of um, well what is it like to make a, uh, an album or a song in 2020 and kind of with the world the way it is was there a turning point for you where you uh, maybe the first song that you wrote that ended up on the album that kind of solidified for you oh okay so this this still works or did this we can go down this route uh, I, sh I remember thinking about these songs because it's not like uh, there was a point at which like a theme emerged, okay. although one did. I, can't, I Actually, I mean, at a certain point we did have a batch of songs and then it started to feel like, well, it's cool because there, there are a lot of common themes that we're kind of exploring on this record. Mm -hmm. But I just remember like, especially at the time that we started writing, like around 2017, it just felt like 
um, I just felt like I would the the news was upsetting to me. There were a lot of upsetting sure. things happening, and I'm not really one to be able to even just have it in within the vocabulary to really sit down and write like a political song or like a mm. topical song about current events. But so it, I kind of had to like process it through my own life and my own experiences. And it really, we ended up making a record that I think reflects the times kind of for the first time, in, but in, in a really natural way where it's like, it's just being, uh, it's, you know, me processing these mm. thoughts through like the prism of like being a father or like being you know a person in a band or a person in the world just you know mm. yeah and but one of those songs i suppose is silent world so uh, that idea the, the, what's the idea behind that song kind of thinking of uh, how you're going to explain the world in, in a sense to your kids or sort of yeah yeah or like yeah wanting to kind of make them feel safe, you know, mm. like that's really important. And then just realizing that, or, you know, knowing that like, uh, the world isn't entirely safe. And, and mm. so you want to create this safe bubble, sure. uh, for your kids and, and kind of realizing that that's not all, that's not going to last forever. You know, they were, they're going to, they're going to, you know, at a certain point they're going to become grown ups themselves and they're going to be dealing with the same anxieties and, and uh, all the stuff that, you know, comes with, you know, being a human being. Sure. So it's, a, it's like a kind of like, it's like sad, you know, it's like, <laughs> this is going to end, you know, like this childhood <laughs> innocence is like something that is really worth protecting, you know. Mm. But with these uh, type of topics, but um, the music then doesn't sound as sad, I suppose. It, it's not, there, there's still a lot of groove to it. And so, so what's that, uh, is that something that happens naturally, kind of just yeah. the way you work? I think that there's a... Uh, We're just a couple groovy guys. But you know, it's also <laughs> like, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think it's a, uh, I think that contrast makes for interesting music and mm. interesting artwork in general. And, you know, I think that two things can be mutually true at the same time. The music can ultimately be uplifting and filled with anxiety and doubt it can ask questions about anxiety and answer them simultaneously. Uh, the lyrics can go one way, the music can go another. You know, like a very sad song, given the circumstances, and one of my favorites from the last year was, you know, David Berman's All My Happiness Is Gone, which is about the happiest melody I can remember from <laughs> last year and in the saddest lyrics that I can right. think of off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's beauty in dichotomy. And not that ours is as starkly contrasting in either direction as, as those things, but I think that the lyrics and the music, I don't know, there's like a wistful, like uh, Martin and I've heard it describe it as like kind of like a longing sort of feeling. Mm. I think it's like the quality of the music with the, that questioning um, creates the whole experience of it, you know? Right. Because, well, th this might be too grandiose a question, but did you find an answer in a way? Kind of, did you figure, figure things out? I think, I think we were, were working through it while we were making this record. I think, like, because we, we, what was cool was, like, you know, I was singing these songs and they were, I was sending these demos around and so everyone was kind of aware of, like, what the themes were on this record, and I think every it, it was kind of resonating in, with everyone in the band and, and with our producer. Like, we had a lot of discussions and long conversations. We would spend days not recording, you know, like, okay. and just sitting and talking about what we're trying to achieve. Um, and uh, and I think yeah, ultimately, like the actual just the process of like really, really putting yourself fully into something and like really. Deciding like if you're gonna if we're gonna make this record if we're gonna like make this piece of art in this world and and if we're questioning like what the point is in doing it like um, I don't know I guess the it see, it felt to us like at least part of the point is to like do it really well and do something that feels meaningful to us and mm. something that feels like it's worthy of like the effort that we want to put into it. Sure. Yeah, I mean I I think that's it. You know, it's like. We didn't find the answer to all of our personal anxieties or the world's problems yeah. by any means, <laughs> but I did. I do think we found the answer to what is the purpose of making a record right now, or mm -hmm. um, you know, how do we make a record right now given all of this outside circumstance? And we found it through making it, and we found it <clears throat> through asking the question why and 
through asking that question, not allowing ourselves to just get complacent and do what and we asking might it normally do. Repeatedly throughout the process, yeah. questioning every step of the way. Why like, are we doing this? Is it good? Are you doing this for a reason? Are you just you know doing it automatically? And I think where we sit on the other side of it now is we're really, really proud and more excited about the band and where it stands than it has been in a really long time. So it's like the proof is in the pudding kind of right. uh, situation, I guess. Can you share maybe one of those uh, discussions or talks you had kind of about maybe one aspect of, of making a record or even uh, in terms of themes or personally between the two of you? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess one example is like uh, there's a song, well, this, this, the record is named after the song The Main Thing. There's a song called The Main Thing. Um, and there was a point at which I was singing... That's actually one of the last songs okay. that we wrote, that I wrote, that we like learned as a, we learned it in the studio. We were, we kind of banged it out like it was the point of it was in my mind partially to like to almost like have the recording sound like a band playing a song for the first time and sure. being excited about it and whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so that was one where they were we I was singing it in the studio. They were hearing the lyrics as I was reporting them and uh, like. I think initially the chorus was different, and it was slightly different. Like, in, and I was saying, they basically they, I came out of the vocal or the live room where I was singing, and like came into the control room, and they were like said something to me like, you know, what what did, what is the song about? Because like, and I told them what it was about to me. Then they were like, well, what you're saying in the chorus kind of sounds like you're saying the opposite of that, you know, or it sounds like you're saying something that maybe you don't mean to say. And it like, because I was saying, um, you know, basically the song is supposed to be about staying true to the thing that you're passionate about. If you know, especially especially when you're questioning it and when you're like feeling like maybe, uh, well, whatever. So, uh, and I think the initial co chorus, I I said something like, you know, I was like kind of asking the listener to also like or basically being like trying to be sound inspiring or something like uh you know like i'll stay true to the main thing and like i'd ask of you the same thing which i think they thought kind of sounded like uh it sounded like a you must stay loyal to me yeah. like love song it sounded like, like a weird you know? like promise ring kind of thing and <laughs> yeah we're all yeah. kind of sitting in the um in the in the booth listening to martin do these takes and sort of looking at each other like and then you know uh Eventually, Kevin, our producer, was just like, Martin, why don't you come in? What is this <laughs> song about? Yeah. You know, which, but even that is like part of the process of like, mm. we never did anything like that before, like give critical feedback on okay. lyrics or just talk together. Or like maybe we can think of, help you think of some other words or ways. And he told us what it was about, which is like the message of the entire album, which is quite beautiful, which is like, if you feel like the whole world is falling apart and maybe you should do something differently, the thing to really do is to make sure you're feeding your own soul, you know, and, and that it can be the most responsible decision in a lot of circumstances. And we were like, wow, well, that's really amazing. And we thought it was about controlling another person. So mm. we would make, well, let's and make I, sure. And, I, and then I was like, like blindsided. No way. Like, <laughs> like, like, of course. We're like, like, you know, so maybe you can go back to the drawing board and ch literally change like four words. And you know what and happened was the like, entire I, song, I, you know? I, well, at first, you know, to be totally honest, I was. Almost, it was upsetting because I was like, I have no idea what else I'm, you know, it's like hard enough to write lyrics and I gotta like reconsider what I'm saying. And it, it took a few, it actually took a few days and then, and it, but it was such, it was just a very subtle tweak mm. kind of was able to like bring the meaning back into right. it. But yeah. Because am, am I right in the final question? And, uh, but this has been much more of a collaborative, uh, collaborative effort in a way because um, well, I think Julian uh, wrote also a but and then um, there's a couple uh, of instrumental pieces uh, that were developed. So mm -hmm. that, uh, was it much more of a collective thing? Uh, this yeah, I mean that story, like the story of the lyrics of that song is a really good example mm -hmm. of like uh, we, yeah, totally. We were pushing each other a lot, and sure. and then yeah, in the basic ways of like, we have um, Julian writing a song for the first time, and Matt Coleman, our keyboard player, wrote the interlude sting. Mm -hmm. um, so that's like a, those are all new elements for us. And there were also other musicians that we had never worked right. before outside of the band that were brought in to add elements that we couldn't add, which was all just part of the same thesis of like 
let's not repeat ourselves, let's do something new. And, and a good way to, to think about doing that is who are people that we know about or you know, think that we could respect to bring into our process who can add something that we're not able to. You know? Right. Finally, kind of to round off then, because do you do you now have a, maybe it's way too early because this record uh, is still kind of the main focus. But do you have now a reinvigorated energy for the kind of what comes next? Yeah, definitely. I don't, I don't think we know exactly what's going to come next, but like this is the spark that's going to carry it through to the next thing. Mm -hmm. You know, excellent. It's yeah. Feels like a the next one we'll call the next thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gentlemen, thank you All very right, much. All right, thanks a lot. Thanks so much. Thanks. Yeah, thank you.